Well, it's a beautiful day. Look at the sky in Montana. And it's a perfect day for what Cowboy and I are about to do. We're going to split some more wood. He's hauling some down with the four-wheeler right now. We're going to go over here to our trailer with the wood splitter and split and try to fill our trailer or at least split for an hour and see how much we get. Well, the sun is shining. It's a beautiful day in Montana. That pile of wood over there is drying, but Cowboy's bringing another load down. We're going to try to split some and fill our trailer. And here he comes with the Ranger with a load of wood in the back. So it's a day to split wood. Well, we got a little bit cut and split, or not cut, it was already cut, but we got a little bit split. Filled our trailer up somewhat, and Cowboy went to get another load, but we probably won't split any more today. We'll wait and see what the weather's like tomorrow, but we got quite a bit more back into our... This right here is our main heat for our home. Our main heat is wood. We use the little wood cook stove, and that is our only source of heat. We do have backup propane um, for when we're gone, or an early morning, real cold. It might kick on once in the morning before we get up and restart this old stove. But this is our heat for our home. Well, I can't believe how fast our days are going. For January, it's beautiful out. I'm in a light vest and shirt, and it's been we've been out splitting wood, and it's been really nice. But I can feel the breeze coming, picking up, and a little bit cooler. So it's time to go gather the eggs, uh, give the chickens a little more grain if they need it, and check on the goats. So that's where I'm headed. <laughs> Only two eggs this afternoon, but Cowboy had got quite a few this morning, so that's not too bad. Well, we're going to take a peek at this roast and see how it cooked all day while I was gone. Ooh, yummy. It looks pretty good. The garlic I've got stuffed in there looks pretty good. And I think it's done. Well, good morning. So far, my projects today are I had bought four pineapples. And I've just about got number one all sliced and on the dehydrator trays. I've got two trays. So it looks like about one pineapple for every two trays maybe just a little bit more. Um, so I should get at least eight trays, maybe eight and a half. The cores, I'm gonna go ahead and put in a jar. I'm gonna add some water and sugar and make a pineapple vinegar out of the core. And just trying to get some projects done in my kitchen and get my kitchen cleaned up before the weekend. 
it seems like it's just been one of those weeks that it's not really messy, but a lot of projects that need to be taken care of or groceries put away. And that's what I'm working at today. But I did just have to play Cowboy. Three games of cribbage, and I won two out of the three. So, not bad. Back here are my two jars of fire cider brewing. I've got a new jar of honey infused garlic. That jar I've been using on, it's, there's not a whole lot left. Another project I have out here are almonds and the peanut butter and the honey to make protein bites. And so it's just projects like that that I want to get done before I put, um, you know, items away in the shelf. So it's just a work in progress and my bar looks like a mess, but it's, it's really not. It means something's getting done on the homestead here. I like to keep up with these. These pineapples are so yummy, even just like this. But putting them on here and dehydrating them, oh my, they're good. So it's time to drag out my dehydrators today. And these pineapples that I just showed you, they are so juicy. Really, really good. I could sit down and eat a whole pineapple right now. They're so good. I hate to really dehydrate them, but they're really good on the shelf too when you need a little, just a little snack. So I'm going to keep cutting. I'll bring you back to show you how many trays I actually get. I should get eight, maybe eight and a half. So we'll be back really soon. Well, I ended up with eight full trays of pineapple. One quart jar of the cores that I'll put some sugar water on to make a vinegar. And I kept enough for Cowboy and I tonight if we have a bowl of yogurt. And berries um, this will taste really good it just melts in your mouth and I just thought he's gonna enjoy that treat too so I've got a treat a jar quart jar to make some vinegar and eight trays of pineapple to dry it's gonna smell good in here well another project almost done almost finished I do have my dehydrators going there both of them and I had another bag of pecans to take care of. I've got two jars here, plus a few more that will go in the jar that I'm using right now in the kitchen for either snacking or oatmeal. And this jar is about full. I'll shake it down and get a few more in them. This is a jar of um, dehydrated tomatoes that I did from my garden that I'm just not getting used and I wanna seal those. Here are two jars of sliced almonds that I've got in a big bulk package for uh, making, oh, protein bites or granola. And here's a jar of just plain pretzels. Here's two jars of those yummy pretzels. And um, one jar we'll probably keep open. The other jar will go out to the Ritz cellar. Here was my jar of pineapple vinegar that I'm brewing. It's all ready. I've got some sugar water in that. Put the date on it. So my kitchen is looking better. I mopped around my wood cook stove, which helps a whole lot. I put Cowboy's wheelbarrow out. We can walk over there. I love my canisters. I'm good, definitely going to be looking for more to add to that. And here's some whole oats that I'm using for um, granola bites or granola or protein bites but it looks a little better out here floor is wiped up I kicked his wheelbarrow out for right now because it was empty I've got us some bacon cooking and when he comes in we'll have some eggs with that so just more projects happening on the homestead well, I have a couple boxes ready to go out to the root cellar, and it's quite a variety. Here were two bags of chocolate chips, some nuts, um, Christmas candy that was left over, and that will keep fresh till next year. More nuts, lots of nuts. Here are pecans, more pecans, 
These are actually chocolate covered caramels. And yes, this is an old seal, but you see I also put a new date on it, 13020. And so that's when it was sealed, and that's what I've had to do on some of these. Like this one was a used uh, seal, and I put the same date there. Um, here's a big jar of pretzels that I'm not really using right now. More candy. Um, these chunks of semi-sweet I use in our protein bites, actually. And more nuts. Um, a little jar of caramels. Some Ritz crackers going out. Some tomatoes. Some more of Dot's pretzels. So, now I just need some mussels. Where's my cowboy? I did already take four jars out when I needed to go get some boxes. So, there should be four more box or four more jars. And that's a pretty good um, stash. And this is going to keep this stuff a good year, um, if longer. So, just something to think about. If you've got extra dollars, I would go ahead and buy you one of these food saver seals and have some jars. And whenever there's a sale, whether it be um, chocolate chips or nuts or pretzels or anything, go ahead and seal them up. Find a cool spot. If you don't have a root cellar, go ahead and just put them in your coolest part of your room in the dark. And they're going to keep at least a year extra. And I always figure when I start to get down to, like, say I've got um, four jars of nuts on my shelf and I take one off, I may take off two, but before I start taking any more, I'm going to go ahead and order more nuts through Costco, get them shipped here and get more jars filled, sealed, and on the back of my shelf. So I've always got a big supply of nuts and whatever else. I do want to do more crackers um, because these are going to be handy. Um, lots of times we will have a salami or a chunk of cheese and I don't have fresh crackers. So I'm anxious to do more of these with saltines and wheat thins and whatever else. So, but anyway, just one more job done. Well, folks, we've come to the end of another day on the homestead. And yes, it's still early, but it's my quitting time today. I got a couple of the projects done that I was really hoping to, plus some more. And it was coffee time, so I've decided to have a cup of coffee, kick my feet up, and I thought I would just share one more little thought with you at the end of this day. And to tell you why... I do what I do here on the homestead and have always done all my life. I've always stocked food. I've always tried to have a backup plan, supplies. Um, it's just something that I've always done. So that when things like what happened, what is happening in China right now, if that were to happen over here um, and they say you're in lockdown, do not leave, whatever, I'm okay. I'm totally fine with that. Not an issue because I have worked and I've strived to be in a position where we can take care of ourselves. Um, don't expect others to take care of you if things get tough. Prepare now. If you've got a little money put aside, I highly recommend stocking up your shelves your supplies, whatever your family may need if something like this were to happen. And just this afternoon, they made it a global emergency warning. They have also closed the whole 2,800 mile border between Russia and China. Lots of other countries have a case or two. Um, they've got several cities locked down in China. They have some dead. They have some really sick. We've got five in the United States that have had it. And I think they're all, you know, doing okay, which I'm really hoping they get a handle on it and it's not spread like it is in China. You know, cross our fingers and pray. 
there's a, a big um, cruise ship held up, and I can't remember what coast, um, with 6,000 people in it because of one lady that had been to China, and she's now getting sick. So they're doing all the tests on the whole 6,000. Um, we had the 201 come over on an airplane from China yesterday. Um, hopefully they're in quarantine or lockdown where they're not able to spread if they do have it because you can have it and not know it for several days. And everybody you come in contact with or touch, you know, this or that, you're, it's just spreading. So I'm hoping that they have brains and sense enough to go ahead and just stay put and not try to ignore it. We don't need that epidemic over here in the United States. But what if, what if that did, did happen here? What's your supplies like? What's your storage like? Can you take care of yourself if they tell you you stay put and don't leave? Um, now's the time to start thinking about that. And that's why we strive so hard to do our garden, do our canning. I do dehydrating. I do uh, preserving. I do freezers. Um, we butcher some of our own meat. I have a supply of eggs. I have chickens. I have a cow in milk. So if we were to get shut down ever from one thing or another, Cowboy and I are going to be fine. I think it's just good common sense to have a plan and be stocking your shelves. Don't wait for an issue to happen, uh, something like this to happen. Don't wait. Um, because if you wait and all these other people out there wait till the last minute to go out, can you imagine the chaos and the, the shelves in the store going empty fast and you may not be getting what you need? So I'm just saying, now's a good time to sit and think on that, make some lists out, get supplies in. I even bought up extra jugs of Clorox. I bought um, extra rubbing alcohol, some Band-Aids, but it's all stuff that we use. It's not something that's going to be bought and just left there. But I do want to know that those are on our shelf. I do have a few masks. Um because I use those even for cleaning my coop on the homestead. So I'm just saying, you know, if you're one of those out there that knows of somebody that is trying to take care of themselves, don't get it in your head that, oh, that's where I'm going when things get bad. No, you probably aren't. Unless you're an immediate family, kids, grandkids, you probably aren't. Because those people that you think you're going to go hoard in on have been working hard to be self-sufficient and to take care of themselves, their family, their kids, if they can get to their place to be a part of that. But otherwise, if you are capable right now, if you have the means, if you have uh, resources and you're just getting by day by day, I suggest you start thinking ahead and you start putting away a little bit of food. Don't rely on anybody else. Um, there's a lot going on in this world and hopefully it all gets a handle on it. But it's, you know, if it's not this, it could be something else down the road. My suggestion is start now. Prepare. Do what you can. Get God on your side. And go through it together. Well, folks, I'm going to leave you right here now. I'm going to drink the rest of my coffee. I'm going to kick my feet up and rest. And we'll chat again tomorrow. I hope you enjoy this. Bye-bye.